What's up, folks? Back in the garage today. Project Stormtrooper, Knight's Garage, 180 degree thermostat from HHP. All right, this is a, mis a uh, Motor Rad thermostat. It says so right there. I also looked at the ones that Napa have and the ones that AutoZone has, and they're both Motor Rad. They had it stamped on the side. So they're the exact same thermostat. Actually, Napa, I think, wanted almost $60 for the same thermostat. Uh, see, AutoZone, I think, was $23, $24, and this was about $22, $23 from HHP. So by far, Napa, again, was the most expensive one. But I put these in uh, several different scat packs without a tune and no problem. This car does not have a tune on it. Uh, I don't plan on tuning it for quite some time. I'm gonna do as many little here and there updates and upgrades to it as possible uh, that I can do without a tune before I try to do that. It is a 2020, so I kinda wanna retain as much warranty as possible. Now, the 180 thermostat can be run without a tune and still reap the benefits of lower temperatures. Uh, your temperatures will begin to rise back up to the stock 210, 215 mark if you're sitting in traffic. Some people have reported as high as 220, 223, you know, sitting in traffic <clears throat> or parked, letting it idle for long periods of time in the blazing heat. It gets into the high 90s here in Alabama. So I think this thermostat is gonna do just nicely in this 2020 Hellcat, just as well as it's done in the uh, two scat pack chargers that I put them in without a tune before. Uh, I mostly seen temperatures around 190 uh, on the gauges on the dash, driving around, even getting stuck in traffic for short periods of time. It may rise up to about 200, 205, but then it, you know, as soon as you start driving it, it falls back down. You that is waiting on me to install this infinitely adjustable uh, idler from Ripatune. I'm still waiting on the black anodized front nose cone to match the TBA pulleys that I have. There, so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, these these pulleys that Ripatune use are the same ones. They're made by TBA machine. Uh, so they gave me the black backspacer, but then they gave me this right here. Now, I called Steven, uh, well, I didn't call him. I sent him a message beforehand, and he said that he would be able to get the uh, black one sent out to me, and I also left it in the notes on the order. But I guess with coronavirus and all this stuff going on that it kind of fell to the wayside. I've been waiting for about 10 days for this uh, coming snail mail, so maybe it'll get here soon so I can go ahead and install this. But anyway, back to what we're talking about. This thing I did was went ahead and jacked up the car, got this blanket, I got a pot here where most of the coolant usually comes out at. It's just a small hole. I don't know if you'll be able to see it right above that pot. And I got a old garbage can lid. Actually, it's fairly new. I bought it a couple weeks ago. Garbage can lid to try to catch as much as possible there. And I also have the Speedy Garage hack here with a uh, one gallon Ziploc bag under. Uh, to try to catch as much as possible. I just have that pan and all down there to get whatever might go into the, the pan there under the engine. Real simple install. I'm gonna go ahead and get these two bolts cracked loose. Keep this on. Do not loosen this and take this cap off. If you take this cap off, it's gonna allow all the radiator fluid to come out of here. You want a little bit of suction power from that cap being on, keeping that fluid as much as possible in the system where you lose as least as possible. Uh, but I do have this bag. Hopefully I can catch everything and not get anything on my uh, little moving blanket here that I use on the floor so I can keep my garage clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these bolts up and get this thermostat out. Go ahead and loosen this bottom one up. Now these are half inch or 13 millimeter. I don't have a 13 millimeter wrench. I have this half inch. Uh, ratcheting wrench. So that's what I'm using. And of course, I don't even know why I have to say this. Don't do this when your engine's hot. Let it sit overnight and then do this. Please don't do this with your engine hot. You're going to lose a lot more coolant and you're going to lose some skin.
getting a little bit of coolant kind of peeing out the bottom here. And since the bottom one is the hardest bolt to get to and mess with, I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way out. That way I don't lose it. I got some ripples here in this bag. Hopefully this whole bag doesn't fall down and ruin my day. And if it does fall down, hopefully that pan that I put down there will catch whatever coolant comes out. Crack this. kind of hold this bag. I don't, I don't want it to fall. It kind of defeat the purpose. Get this top bolt out. Get this radiator hose moved up so it doesn't keep pouring fluid out. Like they make some bolts unnecessarily long. Move that up here so it's not just pouring fluid out of it. And what you'll see, that wiggler valve at the top. And if I get zoomed in here. You wanna make sure the wiggler valve on the new thermostat is located at the top also to better bleed the system of air. So just like on the scat packs, this thing is pretty, pretty stuck in there. Usually it takes a little bit of negotiating with a wrench or something to get it to pop loose. Right. Try to keep my bag to where I'm catching my coolant here. Out. Looks like my bag did a pretty good job. It's not really pouring any cooling out, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove my bag. That's about what I caught there. I do hear that a little bit is making its way down into the pan, but other than that, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Usually you wanna do this as quick as possible, but it doesn't look like I'm losing any coolant, so I'm gonna take advantage of this time to show you the differences in these thermostats the best I can. All right, so right here we have the stock thermostat and the wiggler valve on this one is right up at the top. You can see it right there, top. So we'll just go ahead and turn these around. Now the factory thermostat opening and this opening seems to be about the same size. They actually look fairly similar. Uh, this one's made more out of rubber and this one's got a steel gate on it. The bottom portions look very similar. So for everyone that's kind of wondering the differences in the two, there's 203 stamped on it. So let's get this bad boy put in. Okay, so like I said, wiggler valve is gonna be up here at the top. So you can see it, you wanna locate it at the top. Get it pushed in there real good. And wipe up the little bit of coolant I have on this belt. I want no coolant on my belt. Wipe the pulley off just to couple drops got on there as far as what I can see there's only a few drops down there on the engine pan so pretty sure most of my stuff got caught in the bag shout out to Speedy's garage for that a lot of people have realized that hack and it works really well so go ahead and put this back on top bolt always put the top one back in first because it's easier to get to And I know some of you guys might have seen these videos before. I just like showing my way. There's a, uh, I almost took the bottom pan off. There's actually a drain for the coolant down there. And you have to remove the engine pan down at the bottom. 
and there's a little hose on the passenger side of the vehicle underneath the car that you can actually pop the, the drain and drain about a half gallon of cooling out and you can do this without having to use the bag or anything. This right here is just a little bit easier. You don't have to jack the car up quite as much. I just jacked it up to get things easier to get to. You don't have to jack it up at all if you don't want to. I like lining this, this up the way it's smooth here. It's just part of who I am. So I get this bottom one. I always get this bottom one run up all the way, not tight. Get this situated. Get it brought up. And I go ahead and tighten these down. I know somebody's gonna ask, what's the torque spec on? Hell, I don't know. Probably like six to 12 Newton meters. Something not a lot. It's aluminum. So you don't wanna torque up on it with any wrench. It's gotta, a rubber gasket on it. There's no sense in tightening the piss out of it. Just get them snug or they won't come back out. That's plenty. Remove my light here. Let's see how much coolant got caught down here. Oh. Uh, almost none that is uh that's pretty good i call that a win most of it's in my bag over here so now all i have to do is put the coolant back in go ahead and pop this cap all right pop that cap now i got everything buttoned up you can see the coolant level is starting to go down it's starting to fill the system very slowly to that wiggler valve that was in the thermostat we talked about. So I'm gonna let the car down off the jack stands, make sure that it's level, and fill this coolant back up, crank the car up. All right, so let's try to pour this junk out this bag back in here without getting it absolutely everywhere. I suppose I could have used a funnel. Eh, this is working pretty good. Perfection. Well, so that actually worked out really good. I didn't spill any really. I lost maybe a few ounces <laughs> down there at the bottom. As you can see, it's, it's well over the fill line here. Shout out to HHP Racing here for getting me this thermostat at a good price. Good motor rad thermostat, had these in several cars. Again, there's no tune on this car, not real worried about it. Uh, minimal coolant lost here. I did use the Speedy's Garage plastic bag hack. Uh, only thing I can say about that is you gotta make sure you hold on to the plastic bag, keep it from falling down or you kinda defeat your purpose and it'll all spill out. I'm about to crank the car up, let it cycle through and get warmed up. More videos to come on Knight's Garage, guys. There's a lot of exciting things going on with this Hellcat, guys. I'm really excited about it. I've been looking at things to buy, looking at things to do. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy the third pulley here, this groove tensioner pulley from TBA Machine, kind of match this. And once I get the uh, idler installed from Ripatune, the reason I'm going ahead and installing that with the factory pulley and all is uh, I have read up a lot of people in the forums are having a lot of belt slippage issues, even with the factory pulley installed. I do have some green belts at varying lengths. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna need it or not. I still got pretty good space here, uh, even with these two TBA pulleys installed. The TBA pulleys are nearly the same size as the factory pulley. So it really doesn't make much of a difference as far as you know how much belt you're using here. 
uh, but this infinitely adjustable idler will. So I may go to the little bit longer green belt. Uh, I know there's some controversy back and forth about the green belt. You can just chime in in the comments on what you think about the Gates green belts uh, versus the factory belt here. Uh, this belt right here feels pretty solid and, and stiff also. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know exactly what the benefits are of the green belt, uh, if it reduces slippage or what exactly it does, uh, other than just change the length of the belt. So if you guys know, go ahead and chime in on the comments there. As soon as my front nose cone piece comes in for this right here, I'm gonna install this bad boy. Shout out to Steve Ripper at Ripper Tune for that. Steve's a great guy. Uh, we're having some trouble with the shipping back and forth, but we'll get that stuff worked out. If I have to, I'll just buy another nose cone piece directly from TBA. I think they're like eight bucks. So no big deal there. Uh, coming up on time to look at this catch cam from UPR. Awesome catch cam. You can check out my video on that. I also have a video on the TBA machine pulleys here. Uh, so plenty of videos on the channel all the way back to scat pack days, Mustang videos, uh, you know, videos from friends, cars, uh, things like that. So go check everything out. I appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Go ahead and consider doing that for me. Thanks everybody for watching.